is what I do Even when I'm going through I've learned to worship you Though my circumstance Doesn't even stand a chance My praise outweighs the Spirit of God depend. Spirit of God descend upon my heart.
Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Mr. Lafayette Harris, for reminding us that Christian worship is the experience of the Spirit of God descending upon our hearts. I'm Reverend Clark Bradley, pastor of Fourth Presbyterian Church in the Bronx, and this is our streaming worship service for today, August 15th, 2021. I'm joined today by Lafayette, and in a few minutes, Elder Donald Bacha will join us. He's our worship assistant today, leading us in our prayers and our affirmation of faith. So good morning to our members, greetings to our visitors and friends, and special welcome to any first-time guests we have with us today. This is the, the day that the Lord has made, and I pray that you will all be able to rejoice and be glad in it. Now, before we move on to our, to our order of worship, just to show you briefly the way the service is going to go, we did have a Lafayette just moved it. I didn't see. I was looking at the screen, didn't notice. We're becoming so official. Lafayette, why don't you so, show us our, our latest professional, uh, and go ahead. Take one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're becoming just incredibly professional around here. Uh, so I just I just had to bring that up since. <laughs> so let me bring up now on the screen our order of worship to, for today. As you can see here at the top, the prelude. Lafayette just played that, and uh, this is the greeting. In a moment, we'll go to we'll start the call to worship, the the formal start of the service. But before we do, I just want to mention that this graphic and all the other graphics and images that have words to songs, prayers, scriptures that you need, you can find them all on the church's Facebook page, but in a post separate from the live stream itself, or they're also attached to the email that you received giving you the links to the service. So those are the two places you can go to to find the these graphics. So let's move on now to today's call to worship. It's a fairly well-known passage from Revelation chapter 5. This is part of John's vision of the worship of heaven, and this is the worship of Christ. He appears to John in this vision as both a lion and as a lamb. So this is the, the worship of the lamb who is, sits on the throne of God in heaven. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and under the sea and all that is in them sang, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Amen, and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the gift of worship, that we can worship our Father and, and, and Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for drawing us, for descending to us so that, so that we can be lifted up to, to join the, the saints and, and the angels and all the heavenly hosts around the throne in worship and praise of, the, of our God, our Father, and God the Son, our, our, our sacrificial lamb. We thank you and praise you, Jesus, for the gift of worship that you give us. Amen. We're, we're coming to the prayer of confession, and Elder Donald is with us. Hello, Donald. Hello. Yeah, Donald, yeah, Donald has it. He's, he'll be with us for the next few weeks, and He'll be the worship assistant leading the prayers and the affirmation of faith. So I just thought since this is the first time many of you will have seen him for quite a few months since, I think it was back in February or March is the last time you were worship assistant, right? Yeah, I think sometime in March, right? Okay, yeah, so before Easter. So it's been quite a while. It's been four or five months. So what are you up to now? Um, not a lot. i just busy with work. Um, I'm still working on that book project. I'm coming to an end with that now. So I have a few weeks more with that. So I'm looking forward to yeah. that. Other than that, not yeah. at all. Why don't you remind people what, it, uh, what the book is about? Oh, it's a network certification guide. So it's basically an IT uh, a network kit 
uh, book. Yeah. So like testing for people who are in the computer, well, actually not the computer field, but the networking. Field. Networking field, right. Okay, well, why don't we start with our prayer of confession here. I'll bring it up on the screen, and there we go. So, Donald, why don't you lead us in prayer? Prayer of confession. Let us pray. Eternal Father, your resurrection power conquers all enemies, leaving them as dust beneath the feet of your risen Son. Your blessing of everlasting life with him defies our imagination to comprehend. Your peace captivates our heart and your beauty inflame our desire for you. So why, Lord, why do we resist your will so persistently? We have no excuses. We cry to you for mercy in the name of our Lord Jesus. By the grace of your spirit, Draw us into the delights of your eternal hope. Amen. Amen. You are the Lord, giver of mercy. You are the Christ, giver of mercy. You are the Lord. just confess that we are sinners. We are sinners before a holy and perfectly righteous God who is not only righteous in his deeds, but righteous in his judgment. All sin will be judged. So we need to know there is a, that there is assurance of forgiveness for our sins. So today, our assurance of pardon, we're going to read it together, and it comes from Scripture. These are the words of John from 1 John, not John's gospel, but 1 John, his first letter, chapter 1, that are words of, of amazing assurance from, from Scripture. These are the words inspired by the Holy Spirit. So let's read together this assurance of pardon. The blood of Jesus, God's Son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Did you hear that? The promise to cleanse us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. That is the gospel promise. So friends, believe this good news that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven and we are purified. Let all of God's children say amen to that. And so now we'll come to our passing of the peace. Let me stop that sharing there. So peace of the Lord be with you, Lafayette. Peace be with you. And peace be with all of you. Peace of the Lord be with all of you watching. And if you're with people on the live stream, on the live stream, you can greet each other with the peace of the Lord in the chat window. Or if you're watching with others, you can greet each other with the peace of the Lord. And as you're doing that, we'll continue. We're going to move on to the children's blessing. So let me move on to that here. And I'd ask if you have children with you, that you have them come forward to the screen now and extend their hands to receive the blessing of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I lift up to you all the children who are watching this wherever they are, whenever they're watching. I ask, Lord, for the blessing of your Holy Spirit to fill them with the knowledge of Jesus, with the, the knowledge of his love and compassion, with the knowledge that he forgives and purifies us from all unrighteousness, 
draw these children, I pray, Lord, into your heavenly kingdom. Fill them with your spirit. Purify them from all unrighteousness so that they become worthy to stand before you, before you now and forevermore in the paradise of your heaven. And I pray that you would surround them with your heavenly angels now and guard and protect them from evil and harm in the week ahead. Amen. Amen. And we're going to continue. We're moving forward in our order of worship. Next comes our announcements. For our announcements, we have a few things here. Uh, today, I just came back from vacation. We also have our prayer meeting this evening at 6 p.m. So it's this evening at 6 p.m., and you're all invited to come here to the church. We will either be in the backyard or, uh, depending on the weather, we might be inside in the, the, our social hall room there where there's air conditioning. So we'll be in one of those two places. So I invite you to come and join us. Also, we have uh, the Children's Online Sunday School continuing. It's at 10.20 a.m., so it will be over by the time you're watching this. And there's a couple other announcements I wanted to make here on the Today section. One is, you may or may not remember, I think it was probably six months ago, I told you that we experienced a theft here. Someone had stolen a check for $2,400. Well, someone, we know who it was. It was somebody named Robin because they cashed it in their, their personal checking account. And we filed a claim with the bank. And finally, just this week, thanks to the diligent efforts of Gloria Vidal and Astrid Ibarra, we, were, we received that money back. So we're going to pray for Robin one more time. The, this time, we've prayed a few times for Robin over this, this period and we'll pray. I don't even know if it's male or female. You know, Robin could go, could be a name either way. So uh, we'll pray for that person, whoever it is, uh, one more time. Also, we're going to add a prayer. Um, I just wanted to bring this up uh, just to let you know how difficult things are getting. Worse, things are much more worse here in, with, in New York City with the virus, but in other parts of the country, they're they're basically at the point we were 15 months ago in March and April and early May of last year. If you remember, the hospitals were overflowing. They're having severe problems. And I'm bringing this up because I'm on an email list from uh, Saddleback Church. You might have heard of Rick Warren. He's a pastor of this big church out in California. And apparently they are having extreme problems there. I guess a bunch of their staff did not get the vaccine because they're, they're having people who are just extremely ill uh, with the virus. And from what I've heard is if you get the vaccine, uh, even if you catch the virus, you're not going to be extremely ill. You, know, you, won't, uh, you won't experience the, the hospitalization and all, all the other difficulties that go along. So I just wanted to lift that up to you. And you know, we're going to work, one of our announcements, I guess I might as well jump to this now on September 12th under upcoming events. We're returning to in-person worship here on September 12th, so I do hope you'll be vaccinated. We'll be doing things like taking your temperature and asking you to wear a mask while you're, while you're in the building during the worship service. And uh, hopefully you'll all be vaccinated by that time because it's just, it's so much safer at that point, at least all the adults, of course, uh, the kids, especially the little kids, I guess the vaccine isn't approved for all of them. So those are some of the announcements. Let's just continue here. Uh, the prayers of the people is next on the order of worship. And you see the note there in the middle of the page about sending prayer requests to the church. If you want to be added to the prayer list, uh, just send an email to that address for thpcbronx at gmail.com. And also, we have the final announcement that I have is the pilgrimage coming up. Uh, it's uh, coming up uh, May 3rd of next year, so it's coming up in a while. But you see the information there so that you can, if you want to register, you, you can do so. Call that 800 number and the trip I, and use the trip ID of 60604 and the departure date of May 3rd. And that 
uh, you see that hyperlink there in the the in that little note about the pilgrimage. If you look at the the PDF that you receive, the PDF of the announcements that you receive in the email, it's an attachment to the email that has the links to our service. You can click that and go, and that gives you an outline of the itinerary for the for our trip next year. So that is some of the information I have. And now I think Lafayette has a couple of additional things. Right, Lafayette? So I'll bring you up on the screen here or start, stop sharing. Okay, yes. Um, yes, I just wanted to have a couple of pieces of good news. Uh, one, uh, my nephew, Kevin Tyler, and his lovely wife, Maya, are expecting a newborn baby. And they just found out about the pregnancy a couple of days ago. So my sister's very happy to be having another grandchild. And the second thing is that I have a new uh, job. I'm going to be uh, teaching jazz piano at the Brooklyn Conservatory here in Park Slope, Brooklyn, starting in September. All right. Congratulations, Lafayette, and to your sister, too. So we'll continue now with our prayers of the people. Heavenly Father, we do come to you thankful for the gift, the gift of prayer that you give us. We do praise you that you are the God who hears the prayers of your people, and we lift up to you our prayers now. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for Akusia Dumphy, and we pray that you would guard and protect her vision, that you would, that you would grant her the, the spirit of perseverance, that you would give her courage to face the future. We lift up to you, Trevor and Bernard, and we pray that you would continue to sustain them and strengthen their hearts. We pray, Lord, that you would be with Robin, and we do ask, Lord, that you would that you would forgive her for the theft that she the the money that was stolen from the church. And we pray for Robin, Lord, to 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 be convicted by your Spirit uh, of of her sins and to and to be restored to you through faith in your son, Jesus. Lord, we also lift up to you Carol and Kathy and Waldy and all the people in our congregation who are caregivers, and we ask, Lord, for you to, to give them perseverance and to give them grace as they continue this difficult work of, of, share, of, of serving their family and, and loved ones who are no longer able to help themselves. We pray, Lord, for the spiritually lost in our neighborhood. Lord, we do ask for your blessing on them. We ask that you would bless them with the knowledge of your son Jesus, that he is the way to heaven, that he is the doorway to, to, through whom we must pass. And we ask, Lord, for the gift of faith in him. We pray that you would use us and, and all of your people here in this area to lift up Jesus, to lift up the name of Jesus, and be his, be his witnesses in our community. Lord, we pray for Blanco. We pray, Lord, that you would strengthen his knees and relieve the pain of arthritis so that he can continue to work. Lord, we pray for the, the surge of the... the COVID-19 pandemic, we pray, Lord, especially for, for those who have been terribly sickened by it. We ask, Lord, that you would give them strength, that you would inspire their doctors and caregivers to understand how they can save their lives. We pray, Lord, for strength and health for those who are suffering from it. We pray, Lord, for the blessing of your spirit's comfort for those who've lost loved ones in recent weeks. And we pray, Lord, for the caregivers, the doctors, the healthcare professionals who are struggling uh, uh, under the weight of, a, of a, an enormous burden of care that they need to provide. We ask, Lord, that you would quickly relieve them of the, the overwhelming burden and that you would continue to, to strengthen them and give them endurance for this, this period of testing that they are under. We do ask, Lord, that you would open their hearts and minds to understand that it is you who are the source of strength and, and the spirit of perseverance. So we pray, Lord, for 
churches. We do lift up to Saddleback Church in California and the, the difficulty they're experiencing with the pandemic. And I'm sure so many other churches in the South and in the West suffering the same fate. We lift up to you, Lord, churches here in New York City. We pray for Zion Presbyterian Church, that you would provide them the resources they need to continue. And we ask for your blessing on Ricardo as, as he leads them. Lord, we lift up to you Trinity and Hocknesia Presbyterian Churches, and we do pray for your grace for them, that you would guide them, that you would give them peace, and that they would be able to accomplish your will and the work of your kingdom in the days ahead. Lord, we lift, we lift up to you the FJMK Church in Merobibi and all of the FJMK churches in Madagascar, and we pray for Lord, that you would that you would give them the gift of evangelism, that they would be able to spread the the, the gospel of of Jesus all over the island of Madagascar and beyond. We ask the we we ask this gift for those churches in Madagascar. Lord, we also pray for your church around the world. We do lift up to you, your church, wherever it is persecuted. And, and Lord, before we do that, Lord, we also pray for, for those who mourn, so many who have passed recently, and especially we lift up to you, Andre Prince Woods, Candace Simmons, and Trevor Allen. Lord, they have left behind grieving family and, and, and so many friends who miss them. We ask, Lord, that you're, by your spirit that you would Bless them and bless the people who are, are left behind. Bless the, the mourners with comfort. And so, Lord, we continue now to pray for your church around the world, wherever it's persecuted, in Africa, in the Middle East, in South Asia, and East Asia, that you would, that you would strengthen the faith of your people there, that, that they would have wisdom to know when to speak, and that you would give power to their words, that their touch would release your healing power and that you would draw many millions into your kingdom in the, the days and the years ahead through these, these, those who are suffering through persecution today. Lord, we pray these things in the name of Jesus who taught his people to pray together saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We'll continue our service now with our first hymn. Our first hymn is the classic hymn, Fairest Lord Jesus. Fairest Lord Jesus. The words will come up on the screen in a moment.
friends, we come to our time to read from God's word. But before we do, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. We thank you and praise you for the gift of your word. We thank you that you are the God who hears and that you are the God who speaks, that you have made yourself known, that you have spoken plainly through your prophets and apostles. Thank you for recording these scenes, that these words were recorded and passed down generation after generation, century after century for thousands of years. Thank you for the gift of your word. And we ask now that you would open our hearts and minds to receive your message for us this day. Amen. Yeah. Our first reading is one of the great passages of the Bible, the 23rd Psalm. And so we're going to read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Praise be to God for that, the blessings of that wonderful passage that, that King David wrote. Now we come, we've got two gospel readings, one from uh, some passage, some verses in John chapter 10, and some verses followed by some verses in John chapter 14. Here are the first two verses from John chapter 10, verses 7 to 9. These are part of the story. Where it's a sort of an extended uh, parable or analogy that Jesus told, picking up probably in the back of his mind, he's probably thinking Psalm 23, and he's identifying himself as that good shepherd whom David is honoring. The Lord is my shepherd. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and go out and find pasture. Now for our next two verses in John's, from John chapter 10, verses 27 and 28, Jesus continues talking about himself as the good shepherd. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. And they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. And now for some verses from John chapter 14, An another familiar passage, these first six verses in particular should be quite familiar to you. Let's read, and read, this, is, this occurs on the night before Jesus was arrested. So this is in John's telling of the Last Supper. This is part of the speech that Jesus gave to his apostles, his disciples, at the Last Supper. John chapter 14, verse, starting in verse 1. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also, and you know the way to where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And now jumping to verse 27 in John 14, Jesus concludes, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
to be done. Next comes our anthem. It'll be What the Lord Allows, featuring Bernard and Debbie. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. What are the foundations of spirituality? What might we classify as foundational to Christian spirituality? Some big questions. I struggled with where to start speaking on the foundations of Christian spirituality. So many possible places to, to, to lay that first foundation stone. Yet there, there seemed to me to be one way to approach 
the foundation that fits not our cultural moment because moments are far too swift, here and gone. I suppose it fits our cultural day, the day in the extended sense, like an era. I'm reaching back over 40 years because I think the 1980s saw the, the climax of one answer to our question. So here's the question that we'll use as the stepping off point for the section of this series on spirituality that deals with foundations. The question is, does your spirituality lead you home? Where is its destination? What I see about the 1980s is the, the climax of a spirituality of the material world. The 1980s was a most worldly decade. The greed is good decade of corporate raiders when Wall Street gained the the prominent position in culture it still commands today. The 1980s saw the consolidation of the culture of consumption. But a materialist spirituality, it doesn't, doesn't sound spiritual at all. It doesn't sound spiritual at all, yet it offers its own answers to the question, does your spirituality fulfill you? Where does it lead you? What is its destination? A world-focused spirituality answers, home? That's where all your stuff is. And it satisfied many people for decades. Seeking things, let, uh, seek things, let those things fulfill you. Our destination is the place you keep all the things you bought. Or maybe it's not a physical home at all, but the things themselves, like the money we use to, to buy all those things. That becomes your destination. As I said, a most worldly spirituality. After enjoying things for many years, people begin to realize this spiritual destination, it does not fulfill us. It, it leaves us not filled full, but empty. Shiny new toys do not long satisfy the human soul. Ever bigger and better cars and homes and vacations aren't enough. Really, it amounts to an anti-spirituality. Focusing my heart on the desire to consume things, well, in the end, I realize it is not the stuff, but my own soul that I have consumed. Jesus said, what good will it do a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? After a few decades spent chasing things, many Americans learned to gain the whole world at the cost of my soul, I gain exactly nothing. In fact, the spiritual cost exceeds the material value of the things I, that I accumulated, and, and I end up with nothing. Finding our spiritual destination among the, the things of this world, it is a failed spirituality. This worldly spirituality, well, it's been around for centuries, right? seeking life from the things of this world. It's not a new invention, but, but I think this failed spirituality peaked in the 1980s, maybe more into the 1990s, going into the 1990s. In the wake of the, the realization that this is a failed spirituality, people began looking elsewhere. Many people gave up seeking destinations altogether. During the last 25 years, a phrase became popular, it's not the destination, it's the journey that matters. The phrase got so popular, I even, I even heard it on commercials. Well, worldly spirituality remains a hazard for Christians today, especially Christians who live at its epicenter, New York City, home to both Wall Street and Madison Avenue. 
But I think an alternate spirituality now presents a more pressing danger to throw away the possibility of ever reaching a spiritual destination. As human culture so often does, we lurch from one extreme to another. The more subtle danger is in the second extreme. The Bible clearly teaches that seeking spiritual fulfillment from the things of this world is a spiritual dead end. Things cannot fulfill the human soul. But a spirituality focused on the spiritual journey, rejecting the possibility of ever arriving at a destination, that, that spirituality is not totally alien to the Bible. Biblical spirituality is a journey, the journey from sinner to repentance, then on to transformation into a saint. But the spiritual journey described in the Bible aims at a destination, a goal, a spiritual home. The theme of spiritual journey holds a prominent position in the Bible. How many biblical stories of spiritual journey have gained worldwide fame? Abraham's journey toward God, Moses and the Israelites' journey from slavery to the promised land. David's journey from shepherd boy to king, Jesus' journey to the cross, the Apostle Paul's missionary journeys, the commission Jesus gave his disciples entails a journey to the ends of the earth. Spiritual journey ranks as one of the Bible's grand themes, yet that journey always aims at a destination. The journey lasts a lifetime, but we finally arrive home. On the other hand, a journey without a spiritual destination, forever traveling, never arriving at home, well, that sounds to me like a curse, not a blessing. Never to reach the journey's end, condemned to wander forever without rest or peace. It's a tragic spirituality. Christianity defines the human spiritual journey not as lost and doomed to wander forever, but as lost and looking for home. I hope today's message inspires in you a desire for your home, your, your true home, the destiny you were created to achieve, to live forever in union with the God who created you. I pray that you will so long to reach this destination that the temptations of alternate spiritualities like these spiritualities focused solely on a journey. May they frighten you as spiritual horrors to be avoided. Home is a key in both of today's readings. It is the goal David longs to reach. He desires to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Home is the promise Jesus extends to his disciples. In my Father's house are many rooms. I'm going there to prepare a place for you, and I will come back to take you to be with me so that you also may be where I am, forever at home with Jesus. It is his blessed promise to all who believe. Jesus insists, I will come back for you. I will bring you home to me. Well, in John chapter 10, Jesus takes up David's image of the Lord as our shepherd and applies it to himself. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. What wonderful promises. 
The New Testament achieves its glorious climax with John's vision, the, the vision that is found in Revelation chapter 21, John's vision of our spiritual home, the new Jerusalem, where God will wipe away every tear from our eyes, where there will be no more death, no more mourning or crying or pain. We have arrived home forever and ever. Praise be to God for, for the blessed home he's, he has prepared for us. One way to understand the Bible is as the story of humanity's journey from our initial home, our initial home, the Garden of Eden, to our ultimate heavenly home. The Christian spiritual journey most definitely calls us to long for the journey's end, at home in the eternal rest and peace and joy of God. Does your heart long to complete that journey? Friends, after 18 months of pandemic-induced crisis, does your soul ache for the full reality of God's presence with eternal peace and rest? When with unveiled faces we all reflect the Lord's glory as we are transformed into his likeness with increasing glory that comes from the Lord. That was Paul, the Apostle Paul's vision of our eternal destiny in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. We read in John chapter 14, Jesus declare himself to be the way, the only way to the destiny God the Father offers. Jesus is the only way home, the only door to enter life beyond death. Without Jesus, people are lost, ever looking but never finding, for without Jesus, there is no door to find. Through faith in Jesus, we have already reached home because he is the way and he is the destination itself. So as soon as we start our journey of faith with Jesus, we're already walking home to him. But the Bible does not promise us a walk in the park. As we walk along the journey of life in this world, we will encounter darkness terrible darkness, a valley full of darkness with no light. About this dark valley, David wrote, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yes, friends, there is a dark valley and we will walk it. David warns us, expect to encounter darkness. We all will walk that dark and lonesome valley. But God doesn't leave us lost and forever wandering in it. Amazingly, I say amazing because David lived a thousand years before Jesus. Amazingly, David knew that even the darkness of the valley of the shadow of death could not hide us from God's sight. That's why in the midst of the valley, he writes, I will fear no evil. Though lonesome, David knows he is not alone in the valley of the shadow. You, Lord, you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In John chapter 10, Jesus spoke different words of comfort, but with the same intent. No one will snatch my sheep out of my hand. He is our good shepherd who will find us even in the valley of the shadow, and lead us home to himself. You see, Jesus knows that valley. He's been there, and he's come back, just like he promised his disciples the night before his crucifixion. I will come back and take you to be with me. A thousand years before Jesus spoke those words, David heard them. Through the spirit of prophecy, he wrote, I am lost in darkness, but you, Lord, you are not. You are here with me. 
even in this darkness of the valley of the shadow of death, because you are with me, even at death's dark door, because you are here with me now. I know that I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Jesus knew how frightening that darkness could be. Face to face with its horror in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus cried out, My Father, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not what I will, but as you will. Jesus understands our fears, the, the, the trials and the, the terrors of the journey of faith. Jesus understands that we journey through a fallen and evil world. So we need, <clears throat> excuse me, we need his gift to sustain us on the journey. Jesus is our fountain of living water sustaining us. Taste the gift he offers in the opening verse of our text from John 14. Here is what he offers us. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Oh, friends, how easily we do let our hearts be troubled. How swiftly worry and anxiety consume our minds. And with good reason, this world operates in a state of perpetual chaos. The prince of darkness who rules this world, he hates people who follow Jesus. This evil one delights to fill our hearts with fears and doubts. Listen to Jesus reveal the antidote to fear and doubt. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. And, and we can say, how can you command that? Here's how. He says, trust in God, trust also in me. Friends, we can rise above fear. It's not that fear will that we'll never be touched by fear, but we can shrug off that touch when we trust Jesus, when we trust the one who promises, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. As we walk along the way of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the peace of his spirit within us overpowers fear, enabling us to live without letting our hearts be troubled or afraid. We travel along the way that is Jesus by faith in his sacrifice and his resurrection. This life, despite its trials and troubles and terrors, yes, there are those, but this life becomes not a walk in the park for sure, but a walk in God's glory. May you walk in his light forever. So you Christian believers, learn this, this first foundation of Christian spirituality. In your spiritual journey through this life, you are not wandering you are not lost, wandering aimlessly with no hope of reaching a destination. Yes, we Christians, we, we are looking. We are looking for signs of our destiny, that glorious home seen by John at the end of the book of Revelation. But we are not always wandering, never finding rest and peace. The rest and peace our souls seek. We possess the sure and certain hope of blessed peace and rest in our eternal home. In a minute, we'll sing our last hymn. I ask you to contemplate its final words. There would I find a settled rest while others come and go. No more a stranger or a guest, but like a child at home. I invite you to enter the city of God, your eternal home, through its only doorway, Jesus Christ. What a blessed spiritual journey we are on with Christ. He cannot fail. He cannot fail because his work is already finished and complete. He has already conquered death. He has already broken open the valley 
the way out of the valley of the shadow of death. It's done, complete. His triumph is finished. Walk with him, all of you. Walk with him, all of you, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen, and let's pray. Heavenly Father, I do pray that that we will experience you walking with us. Oh, Holy Spirit, come be with us now. Walk with us this week. Guide us in the way everlasting. Amen. Well, friends, we're at the affirmation of faith in our order of worship, and Elder Donald is back with us again to lead us in the affirmation. As we often do, we're going to use the Apostles' Creed as today's affirmation of faith. So why don't you go ahead and lead us in this, Donald? The Apostles' Creed. Join me in saying what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 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 Our next hymn, our second hymn, is My Shepherd Will Supply My Need. The choir will be leading us in that, and the words will come up on the screen in just a moment.
friends, we come now to our offering time. I'm going to bring our offering information up on the screen. You see here our offering information. We can receive donations electronically by the Zelle app using the email address on the screen, treasurer at 4thpc.org, treasurer at 4thpc.org. So that's our giving information. We do hope that you will continue to support our ministry here at Fourth Presbyterian Church. And now we're going to continue with our offertory led by our music director, Lafayette Harris. I'm going to bring him up on the screen and he will start the offertory in just a moment. Come by the Riverside, take one and only one.
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye, heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen, 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 and amen. We've come to the last prayer of today's service, near the end of the service, that is the prayer of dedication. And I'll bring that up on the screen so Elder Donald can lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Merciful Father, creator of all people of the earth and the lover of all souls, we pray for your compassion on all who do not know your son, Jesus Christ. Let the gospel of Christ's death for sins be preached with grace and power to all who have not heard it. Soften the hearts of people who resist you and bring home to your fold all who have gone astray, that Jesus Christ may be the good shepherd of everyone whom you have called to live eternally in your glorious presence. Amen. Amen. So this is where Donald will be leaving us for today. Take care, Donald. See you next week. All right. See you. Bye, everyone. Friends, we've come to the end of our service. I invite you to receive God's blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of God the Holy Spirit be with you, with those you love and with those nobody loves, this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Our service is over. Goodbye. Have a blessed week. Take care, everybody.